Hello and welcome to the first episode of Bring on the Cheese, where we review movies that became immortalized for their corniness and their cheesy effects, but that were so loved that they're still brought up decades later after they were created. Now, there was always one movie that I've always wanted to review. Us. Laser swords spew into the sky! Pew pew pew! Flash Gordon was adapted from an original comic strip that was established in the 1930s. Shortly afterwards, it had a TV series, but a movie wasn't made until almost 50 years later. I've read a few comics that people had collaborated, and it had its own charm of creativity, and some pretty likable characters, if you could get past the rainbow bright color scheme. But it was the 30s, it was new, and something a lot of people had never experienced before. The year was 1980, so how do we start every single sci-fi movie that starts off in this decade? I'm a stare into space! Clytus, I'm bored. Okay, Ming, it's only been 10 seconds, and right off the bat we get the bad guy targeting the Earth. Oh, I wonder where the villain might show up. Emperor Ming decides to destroy the Earth with a jet-powered earthquake to only take out a few remote buildings. I don't care what anyone says, this movie is one of the greatest opening montages and score ever made, oh, which I might add, was made by Queen. <laughs> this movie just got 10,000 times better! Kick it, Freddy! Returning home from vacation in the middle of nowhere, Flash and travel agent Dale Arden are on a plane ride home. When all of a sudden they experience turbulence from the natural disaster with the most cheesiest sound effects and obvious bad guy laugh. Any problem, fellas? Bit of clear air turbulence, nothing serious. <laughs> nothing you'd want to toss a third down pass through either. Would you like to autograph this for my kid, Mr. Gordon? Glad to. What's his name? Buzz. Oh, movie! Now the co-pilot only has two minutes left to live, and I was just starting to like these guys! So as we go on, we meet the scientist played by a fiddler on the roof's topol. Yeah, this guy. And his partner, which I guess he's a master of fire because this hot hailstone doesn't seem to take much to be extinguished. Okay. Cowabunga. He just said cowabunga. What? I turned on the subtitles to make sure that I heard a grown man just say, Where is your ginormous turtle shell, you sack of lies? <laughs> so Topol has a plan to stop these disasters from happening over the world, so he decides to take a rocket ship to its source. His partner doesn't really want to go with him. This is probably why. Get your toothbrush and whatever. Grab your tampons. Monson! Monson! Why are you running away? I don't know! Because you're pointing a gun at me! Hold on tight, let's put baby down, right here. Where did they- Hold- Okay, hold on! Did Emperor Ming just do a Power Rangers thing just to randomly pick two pilots out of the sky? I know what you're thinking! But it's for the plotline! No! No! What the hell? The delivery on some of the lines here are too good to mention all of them. No! We're only 10 minutes into the movie, and if I were to make a comment about every single line that's hilarious, we'd probably be sitting here for the next three hours. So conveniently, Flash and Dale crash their plane into Dr. Popol Cuckoo's laboratory, and he dupes him into thinking a telephone is inside a rocket. What is with 80s sci-fi and telephones? One time traveling telephone booth. Strange things are afoot at the Circle K. Flash and Dale are convinced he's crazy, so in an attempt to escape a very cor <laughs> a very cleverly 
choreographed fight scene happens. I love vehicles that have headbutt buttons! Especially vehicles that cause this dialogue to look like you're constipated. So then they fly into a black hole to come across the galaxy, which the Emperor Ming has control of. For a guy who seemed to be the Emperor of a galaxy, why did he come back on a giant flash red murder beam to just capture the two random pilots? And then immediately just go back home. But it's for the plot line! Ah! So they've crash landed on Ming Dynasty in the galaxy of Mongo. Yep, Mongo. And Ming has sent out his demented version of the lollipop guild. Wait a minute. The storm, the castle, the fucking space samurai. We're on the ground. Back home? I don't think so. And the realization of, hmm, I don't think we're home anymore. Damn it, this is basically a sci fi version of Wizard of Oz! Soundtrack by Queen! So Flash wants to make peace. Come on, can we be friends? And that guy was just choking Flash with a handgun. You know, for a very evil Supreme Overlord, he wears a very pretty dress. Hugh Badass Character Number One, Timothy Dalton. Stop! The Ice Jewel is our tribute. Voltan stole it while we were burying our dead on Phrygia. And Badass Number Two, which anything he does is both funny and awesome. Put down your weapons! No one dies in the palace without a command from the Emperor. Hail Ming! You obey, or you sacrifice your daughter. Not just do anything. Ming is clearly an evil dude who seeks pleasure out of being evil. Terrifying his subjects and destroying random planets to become part of his solar system. It's up to Flash to make a camaraderie of all the different people from the different kingdoms to rise up against Ming the only way he knows how. Through camaraderie and football. <laughs> football! 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 I don't like him. Throw him in jail! I demand to see the governor! Nope. So Ming sets up his execution by a gas chamber, in which I have to admit he kind of went all out for a coffin and a plaque in his name. An entire room to himself. I mean, the guys just met the morning of the execution. Oh, snap. Wait, it was a ruse the whole time. Ming's daughter is a huge slut and has a few tricks up her sleeve. Wow. Great character development movie. Well done. Well done. Way to go that extra mile. Back from the dead, I've saved you. My God! How? By magic, of course. Magic, of course, because that's what doctors use. Ming decides the actor is too smart and must be dealt with by brainwashing and replacing of his knowledge so he can live with the fact of being personally responsible for the destruction of Earth. You're saying it's my fault Earth is being destroyed. Precisely. Okay, and he keeps Dale as a personal plaything. Bitch, I will cut you! Dale escapes after she's found out that Flash is still alive, and all of a sudden she becomes Princess Rambo. Hey, buddy.
awesome! Flash travels to both kingdoms to recruit armies of Peter Pans and Harvey Birdman's on Casual Friday. The village green is filled with people that basically live like Ewoks and have strange rituals when a boy becomes a man. I am now of age, green father. I ask for the test of manhood. Choose your passage into this world or the next. May Arbor guide you. Ha! <laughs> I get it! Arbor, like trees! These people live in them! I get it! Ha <laughs> ha! Send me on my way! Spare me the madness! I will. Hold him. Basically a murder bar mitzvah. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, Riff Raff from the Rocky Horror Picture Show. I love him. Stay. I do sometimes keep a promise. Slut! Prepare a feast. No, not for me. I have to get back right away before I'm missed. Get back right away? And why did you come? I brought you a present. Hello. Welcome back from the grave. I knew you were up to something, though I confess I hadn't thought of necrophilia. Easily, Clytus. Get me Gordon and Barrett. Watch as my facial hair jiggles! Flash is a duel of, uh... Poke the killer giant scorpion with Prince Baron while Princess Rambo and Professor Dewey Dude fly off to retrieve him in a spaceship bicycle. Oh no! Harvey Birdman got me! Death is certain, but only after tortured madness. How long? Hours, days, depending on your strength. End it now. Tricked you, Barry! Back off! One move and you're looking for a new prince. Flash escapes. Aha! Now watch me as I ditch my newly acquired sword! <laughs> oh, I could have really used that sword to fight the swampy butt monster. <laughs> what I love about sci-fi is that, like, anything could be a weapon. This is not a crossbow! Pew pew pew! <laughs> This is one grave you won't be returning from. Voltan wants a word with you, Baron. A lot of distrust has developed amongst the leaders trying to protect their own kingdoms from Emperor Ming's wrath, which explains why there's so much hostility. What would you do if I were captive in your kingdom? I would remind you of Article 17 of Ming's law. No prince of Mongo taken captive shall be offered for ransom without first being given the right of trial by combat. Is there such an article? I'm afraid there is. What a damn nuisance! How is everything he does still funny? Let the combat begin! To the death! If you kill me, you'll team up with Voltan and fight me. So Flash almost knocks Baron off the Mortal Kombat fight stage, and Baron agrees to fight with Flash. When Emperor Ming's right-hand man, Golden McFoley, appears to ruin the fun and have everyone arrested. You will be liquidated for treachery. Voltan, you will surrender these fugitives at once, or the Imperial fleet will blast your kingdom to atoms. 
Flash kills him on a few spikes and immediately turns into an office distress toy. The first step forward. Because that's exactly what happens when you get your chest impaled on a death spike. But it's crucial to the plot. No! The Voltans fly off in fear when Ming arrives. He offers Flash to work underneath him. Because honestly, I think Ming's terrified of this guy. I mean, in one day, Flash had defied death, rallied kingdoms together, surviving when Ming left him alone in a flying castle, and blew up the whole thing! Flash. Hey, look at that! A conveniently placed space jet ski! With a conveniently set ham radio that goes directly to Prince Voltan's wrist! As Ming threatens to marry Dale for a day, Flash is making his way back to rendezvous with the birds and the green guy to partake in an epic battle against Ming. General Kala, Flash Gordon approaching. What do you mean, Flash Gordon approaching? On a Hawkman rocket cycle. Shall I inform His Majesty? Imbecile! The Emperor would shoot you! for interrupting his wedding with this news. Yeah, awesome laser sword, but you can see. Wait, where's Flash going? Flash Gordon in range, Captain. Here comes my favorite moment when I turn into a screaming child. Hey look, Bomb comes complete with Sirius XM Radio. Nice. Oh, oh, oh. Hero's hit! I'm going in after him! Impact your spine! Oh well. Who wants to live forever? <laughs> So after Flash and the Hawkman take over the ship, they use this to cleverly raid Ming's castle. Wait a second, was that guy talking in autotune? His mouth didn't even match up to what was said! Ah! Gods, activate defense plan Christmas tree, but don't let the Emperor know we're under attack because he's getting married. How do we do that? I got an idea. Attention all wedding guests. There is no cause for alarm. The city's weapons are being fired in continuous salute in honor of His Imperial Majesty's wedding. Yes, I am awesome. And meanwhile, Flash says, I'm gonna crash the ship into this. This, this should work. 
Tell me more about this man, Houdini. Baron and Doc had escaped from prison and they tried to find a way to get the lightning field down. The bloody bastards! Free! Take us to Ming. We do not lead traitors to the Imperial presence. Cut off! Oh, she's melting now. God damn it! We've got to deactivate the lightning field. Where are the atomic generators? There's no time. They're six miles underground. I'm heading for Sector Alpha 9. Hold the fort. Baron is rushing the hallways, trying to get to the very top to stop the wedding. Yeah, screw you, tripod. And wouldn't you know it, Flash takes the ship and conveniently crashes it in the direction of the wedding hall. Hey, you guys! Now available for a limited time, Ming Kebabs, high in fiber and douche magic. It's good for you! The game's lost, Ming. Stop your attack on Earth and I'll spare your life. So Ming gives up and escapes into his mystical ring, and it's curtain call, everyone! But wait, how do we know what happened to Earth? I mean, we spent a lot of money on the visuals, the... The backgrounds, which were pretty fucking awesome. There couldn't be possibly any more money after we spent on the visuals of the Christmas tree defense mechanism. There could have easily been one simple shade of color around the entire thing. That would have been convincing, but nope. So what happened to Earth? The reactors are destroyed. Glad you made it, Voltan. Better late than never! <laughs> Dale! Look out, Flash! Flash! Don't move! Stay where you are! Long live Flash! You've saved your ass! Have a nice day! Yeah! Every movie needs to end with that. Brilliant. So what can I say about this movie? I love it. It had its moments where the costumes were pretty cheesy. Some of the acting was pretty bad if it was trying to be taken seriously. My god! The visual backgrounds were mind-blowing how was that made the action scenes kept me in and there wasn't a single character i hated except for general kala who was doing her weird hand thingy when she brainwashes the doc all in all it's a classic that a lot of people need to see and you're really missing out if you decide not to thanks for watching my name is dan gessner and this has been bring on the cheese If you want to see more, please hit subscribe, and in the meantime, you should check out my friends at Drunk Nostalgia, where they see Let's Play videos of classic games and 90s product reviews with a little bit of a homestyle twist. Thank you, guys. I'm a Kung Fu! Pew, 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 pew!